Hey everybody, this is Perch. It's it's come to this. We're in the final week of the Ten of Swords uh, giant event crossover. Uh, twenty two issues or twenty four issues, depending on how you look at it, and you know other shenanigans going on. Um, this has been an interesting event. It is, I think, I can say whether you love the event or hate the event, it isn't quite what was advertised. It was definitely not what people were expecting. It subverted expectations, and if you're, I think the the end way of summarizing it, and and all three of these issues uh, do kind of you know put a bow on this topic, is if you've been following along with Excalibur, this is very much an Excalibur driven. Um, Saturnine, Otherworld, Teeny Howard story. And then there's elements where the other teams are coming and crossing over with it. Now, I, I get why Marvel didn't bill it that way. And they they didn't say, hey, it's an Excalibur kind of themed event. Uh, if you're thinking about your first major event coming out of the whole, you know, Dawn of X and, and House of X Powers of Ten kind of rebirth and relaunch the X universe, you wouldn't say, we're going to start with Excalibur. Like you, you wouldn't go out of your way to say that. Uh, so they didn't, and but that is that is what you've got. So this issue uh, basically is the uh, titular title uh, X Men. It is by Jonathan Hickman, uh, Mohamed Asur, uh, who I will continue to butcher his name, but he's a very nice guy. Um, getting closer though. At any rate, our our comic opens on Krakoa. Cyclops is uh, staring off into the mist. And he's basically saying, let's get everybody ready. They're, they're ready for us. Um, she's talking to Jean. And they had the, the, basically the call from Cable saying, hey, you know, things are going really crappy. You need to come save us. It's, it's all going bad. And then their connection was severed by bad cell service uh, by Saturnine. And what he doesn't know, of course, is that Gorgon basically evened up the stakes. And there is, in theory... Uh, one more battle. I went back and read those issues. There was never any call for there being one more battle. So, um, you know, spoiler, th there is just one more battle. This is the final tournament contest we're going to get. But you do get the sense that Saturnine might have kept this going for like five more years. I, <laughs> like it was there. There was no there was no uh, urgency to kind of speed that along. But uh, but eventually people got tired. So at any rate, uh, back to this comic, Cyclops and Jean are going to go talk to the Quiet Council. So they show up. And we get a big council meeting. And here's where, um, you know, you might say during what I what I will say as well. I know there's some people who absolutely hate this event, absolutely love this event. One thing that I think probably my biggest complaint about this this entire Ten of Swords event is that it is uh, rid the, the pacing is is ridiculous in the sense of it is it does not know quite what to do with itself in terms of. Uh, how fast, how slow it goes. It, it will interrupt the action for kind of different sequences. And it, it is you know, reading this as kind of one big all-in-one sitting. Uh, if people buy the omnibus and they, they read through it that way, uh, it's going to be rough in that sense. It, it, is, it is definitely a, a rough read where that's concerned. Uh, the pacing is, is all over the place. So we do get a fairly long sequence uh, here um, coming up. But but so we've got we've got several pages. We've got four pages, basically. Cyclops and Jean getting ready to go talk to the Quiet Council. We then briefly hop over to Otherworld, where uh, Saturnine does say we've come to the end of it. So yeah, in fairness, okay. Um, she is she is pointing out uh, I, in the previous issue there was no indication that this was a final battle, but then here she is saying no, no, we're we're gonna we're calling it a day, and it's Apocalypse versus Annihilation, husband against wife. Uh, let's battle. Uh, Annihilation, who is Genesis, of course, Spockless's wife, uh, agrees to set down the uh, Annihilation helmet and have a fair kind of fight, although somewhat fair fight. I think the belief is that, uh, you know, Apocalypse will be weakened by having to, uh, you know, to look at his wife while he's fighting or we get sad face uh, out of Apocalypse there. And, and so just as a cross swords, we hop back to Krakoa and the meeting at the Quiet Council. So, um, in this quiet council meeting, it's, it's a very, you know, fairly long, you know, we, we basically get nine pages. It's, it's the bulk of this comic is this, this discussion. We get a lot of, you know, nine panel grid of this debate that goes on. So Cyclops wants to run off and, you know, and, and fight this fight. Uh, the, the quiet council, Shaw and Sinister and, uh, you know, it, they, they're, they're not into it. And basically, as they go through, we we see that uh, this this is coming, but they're still it's it's a very weird meeting because 
you you know, Magneto and Professor X are kind of chairing this discussion, but it, it feels like a very awkward argument or, or discussion. You know, Cyclops saying we're losing, we're going to go through, we're going to pull everybody out, we're going to seal the gate. And we don't get, we've had interruptions from Krakoa coming about why he, you know, Krakoa doesn't want it sealed. It wants to be reunited with Rocco, but uh, we, Krakoa doesn't weigh in here. Maybe it's because Doug is gone. It's unsure. Although it didn't stop it in previous issues. So as they're going through, they're reminded that, hey, if you die over there, you're, you're not coming back. Um, and you know, that, that we can't, uh, but Shaw points out, we can't allow you to, uh, we can't lose so many of our council members. So if you go over there and you, you do this, we're voting you out of the council. It's a really weird logic. I mean, it's clearly a power play to get them out, but it's, it's, it's screwy logic, uh, for sure. And, uh, Shaw is saying, you know, failure, death, and a flawed resurrection could result in a broken council. So I demand that we vote on this. We vote that if you leave, you, you lose your seat because the body must endure, but that's weird because they're kicking them off the council. And so it, it is a broken council by the nature of their vote. So, I mean, it's, it's just, it, this is a dumb move, uh, but it does pass barely. Uh, Nightcrawler, Emma, uh, Kitty uh, abstain, but uh, basically uh, Professor X and Magneto side with the, you know, the villains, uh, for lack of a better word, uh, in this. Uh, Shaw thinks he's done something very clever. Uh, but Gene's like, I don't even care about that. I'm going anyway. Nightcrawler makes some comments about how he was offended. He didn't get a raise a sword like the others. And so just as they're getting ready to go, um, you know, there's another uh, problem. So it's like, well, um, let's, you know, if you go through, we're going to close the gates. So, uh, you know, it, it we're, we're also going to, you know, just basically you're, you're, you know, we're, we're not going to hold the door open for an invasion. So we're going to close the gates and, um, and you know, that, that's, that's bad too. So this whole dialogue doesn't make a whole lot of sense, to be honest. It's, it's intended. The stakes here are that it's a way that Sean, and some of the more evil characters on the council are manipulating, getting Cyclops and Jean, uh, off the council. That's, that's kind of the, the intent here. So we're going to have them be out of it. We already got apocalypse over there. Uh, why Professor X is acting that way or why we're going through all this nonsense in the first place is a, is a whole different story. But regardless, we get tired of uh, procedural politics and we move um, briefly back to a sword fight. We get a page of uh, some hacking going on, but then we go back to the council again and and uh, they're, they're going off. So we get a couple data sheets at that point talking about the Krakoan government and how the Krakoan government is the ruling party of Krakoa and and uh, then another panel, which is a little bit more, this one's going to get called out in, I'm sure, by some other people. It's not as dire as, as a pe some people are going to draw some conclusions to this that I don't think are there. But basically, it is the suggestion of the Krakoan Council that the familiar name of the Xavier School and X-Men be eliminated. That basically, we're no longer going to call it the X-Men. Uh, we don't agree with, uh, you know, be being represented that way. And um, while they don't talk about the gender aspect of it, I've already seen some people starting to complain about how this is how they erase the word uh, men. Uh, it's a bit of a weird argument because this whole thing is taking place in a comic called X-Men. So, and it's still going to be called X-Men months from now, but what, whatever. Uh, you know, this, is, this is just a bit. So, uh, okay, finally, on uh, roughly page you know, 22, we're off to this sword battle. So... Uh, Genesis kind of immediately in our second page of this battle uh, cracks the sword of Apocalypse and uh, she rushes at him and he grabs her arm and just guts her with a knife and causes basically mortal damage, but he won't finish her. And he says, I, 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 I don't want any of this. Maybe, maybe speaking for some of the readers of the event. Um, and Saturnine's like, well, we still need to have a victor. And uh, Genesis is compelled to put back on the helmet of Annihilation. And she does, and that magically heals the wound. And she says, you know, nothing is settled here, even though in theory, Apocalypse kind of won, but he wouldn't strike the killing blow. So maybe Krakoa would have won. Uh, but, you know, uh, Annihilation basically says, you know what, I'm done with this. This is a stupid tournament. I'm, you know, bring on the chaos where we're... we're uh, Nothing is settled, and I, I, I'm, I'm out. Let's, let's have a big fight. 
And that's where our comic ends, uh, setting up for Excalibur and Ten of Swords destruction. So, you know, a few things in all this. Like I said, it was a lot of uh, material uh, based on this this council. Um, we don't get the, you know, here's who's won, here's who. We don't get the score sheet in this comic, which is a little bit odd. We've been getting it in the previous ones. They just skip it for this one for reasons best known for Hickman. And it is, um, I, the, the, the story that's trying to be told here is that the ruling council of Krakoa is now going to tip more evil. Uh, it's tipping more to the more sinister people on the council. And uh, the whole reasons for doing this seem kind of stupid. I mean, Sinister himself was off uh, fooling around in other world and uh, they were fighting to not close the gate and then they're going to close the gate. And it's just, it's a lot of, um, it, 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 that part is, is a lot of positioning for what the next year is going to be is, is basically what that is. It's, it's positioning for the future of the X-Men within this event. Um, we get, I, I mean, I, I think not to you know rub it in, but we get, basically one, two, three, four pages of the big sword fight between Apocalypse and Genesis. So four pages of this thing they've been kind of leading up to for, you know, 20 odd issues here. So that's a, that's rough if you think about it that way. But anyway, that's what we got. So onward and upward. Did you enjoy this issue? Did you like it? Let me know in the comments below. Like, subscribe, click the bell for notification. Most importantly though, and as always, thanks for listening.